it, Travis. Good morning, Kelly. You're here early. Yeah, I woke up early, decided to get a head start in the week. Well, where's Rude? I don't know. Haven't seen anybody. When I came in, all the lights were already on. Well, I have an announcement that I'd like to share with everyone today. You and Marcy are getting married. Why does everyone think when you have an announcement to make, it means you're getting married? I don't know. It just seems like it. So are you? No, I am not getting married. Ever? Well, no, I didn't say that. So there is a possibility of an announcement in the future? There is always a possibility, because I've learned to never say never. So, what's the special occasion? Well, I have secretly been working on a script about a 1940s detective. And I just wanted to show it to everyone else and see if we might be able to do it in the show this week. Don't we already have a theme for this week? Yeah, but I talked to Rudy about this last week, and he said we could push it if we wanted to do it in the show this week. But anyway, here's the script. Set in the 1940s, eh? Yeah. And so now all we need to do is try to find some costumes and make our stage look the best we can. It's going to be a little tough with limited props, but I think we can try to get the idea across. So what do you think? I think it sounds like fun, Detective. Fun? It's a murder mystery, Miss Marilee. Who's Marilee? She's a suspect in a case that hasn't been solved. I didn't do it. Honest, I didn't. That's what they all will say. Okay, Travis. I read it. I really like it. I want to do it. I just have one question for you. What? How are we going to make this work with all these different sets? Okay. I know it looks like a lot, but I got an idea how we can do it. We just leave the entire stage black, and we use a desk for the detective, counter for the bar, and we can even use the counter that I built when Gates and I did that diner scene last year. I remember that. So, when I talk to everyone separately, just the stage is black, and it's just a prop. Okay, well, you're winning me over. Why don't we just see what we can pull together? I'm gonna talk to Joanna and have her start checking into costumes. Yes, we need those. Good idea. Thanks a lot, kid. Okay, Chef, the ball's in place. What next? I'll tell you what's next. We gotta have a desk right over there that looks like 1940, see? And we're gonna put the bar right here and a couple of other sets over there. Yeah, we gotta figure the whole thing out, see? That's just the problem. I don't see. Well, that's why we're here right now, to figure out what we need for our murder mystery. Have you read the script yet? No, not yet. Not yet? Uh, do you have a good reason as to why you have not read it yet? In fact, I do. What? You haven't given it to me yet. What? I gave everybody one. Well, everybody but me. And frankly, I feel left out. Well, I'm sorry, man. Why didn't you say anything? I just figured I wasn't in it. Not in it? You're a suspect. In fact, it's you and three others. Yeah, you're all suspects. And I'll make sure you get that script, too. Yeah. Because this weekend, on this very stage, I'm going to reveal who did it. And it could have been you, see? I didn't do it, honest. Yeah, that's what they all say. Hey there, Travis. Hello, Joanna. I read your script, detective. Yes, we've got a mystery on our hands. And it's not gonna be easy. Four suspects, all with motives. But which one did it? You had me on the edge of my seat. Good, because that's what we wanna do. Add a little bit of adventure around this place. I'm still trying to get over the intense drama of it all. Well, to be honest with you, I just came up here to check up on the costumes with you. Oh, yeah, I got that all set. All you gotta do is go down to the costume shop on 9th and pick something out. I'm gonna tell everybody else later on today. Great. And thanks for setting that up. Yeah, no problem. Can I ask you a question? You just did, but you can ask me another one. Have you ever done any acting? Are you gonna discover me? Well, this just might be your lucky day, little lady. I could always write in one more role and make it five suspects for this weekend show. If I'm gonna do any acting, you have to talk to my agent first. I see. Well, before I could do that, I have to know if you've ever done any acting, and if so, what? I've done some acting. I was in a play in the fifth grade and I had one line. One play? Yes. Your whole life? My whole life. And you only had one line? One line. Do you remember it? As a matter of fact, I do. 
What was it? Leave him alone. Oh, Joanna. Oh, wow. That was powerful. I mean, what acting on that one? I mean, you blew me away with that one. That was, is that really your line? Yes, I was telling one boy to leave the other boy alone. It was a play about a bully. And did he leave the other boy alone? Yes, he did. Well, see, I was right. Your acting ability left him no other choice. He left him alone because it said so to do that in the script. Ah, I see. Well, I won't let Kelly or Lisa know about the talent that's being kept hidden up here in this office. Well, that's a good idea. I mean, we wouldn't want them to get jealous or anything. No, we don't. I mean, we don't want them walking off the stage and walking out the door if you ever got on that stage and started acting, so we just keep this our little secret. Good idea. Yeah, well, Joanna, now it's time for me to leave you alone. So I'll see you later. See you, Travis. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Leave him alone! Leave him alone. I came into the office expecting it to be like any other day. The usual stuff, but it wasn't. I saw the news on my desk. Brett Sampson was killed last night. Murdered. He had a lot of enemies in this town, and I've been trying to find him. I guess somebody else beat me to it. I got on the phone and found out what I could about the case. The department had a list of suspects, and it was my job to track them down. But I didn't need that list. I could think of four people who would want Brett in the grave. Two of them were Danes. One of them was Brett's partner, and the other was Billy Sanders. I'd been on this beat for weeks, and the news hit me hard. I didn't even take time for my morning coffee. I had a job to do. Who killed Brett Sampson? It was my job to find out. First on my list was Sarah Ellen Sampson, Brett's ex-wife. She was a hostess at the Flamingo, a restaurant on the east side. Sarah Ellen hated Brett and for good reason. He two-timed her about a hundred times. But she wasn't a goody two-shoes either. She returned the favor almost as much as he did. Sarah Ellen Sampson? Yes. Detective Larson. How can I help you, Detective? Have you heard the news about Brett? <laughs> what about him? You tell me. He's a no-good, lying, wife-cheating bum is what he is. I wish he was dead. Wish granted. He is. He took a shot in the gut last night just after midnight. He was trying to get into his car and someone let him have it. it didn't take me long to figure out who might have done it. That led me to you. Look, Detective, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't kill my ex-husband. Not that I didn't want to. He was the worst human being on Earth. That's what most ex-wives say. Well, it's true. The only place he belongs is where he is now. In hell. You know, I heard a preacher say one time he wouldn't even wish his own worst enemy in hell. That preacher wasn't married to my ex-husband. No, he wasn't. This was my chance. She opened up the conversation for me to tell her about Jesus Christ. I've been a Christian since I was a boy, and I've been on the force for 15 years. But I never told anyone they needed Jesus to avoid hell. And since she brought it up, this was my chance. Speaking of hell... Look, Detective. I don't have all day. I told you I didn't kill my ex-husband. Now, do you have any more questions? Yes, just one. Where were you a little around midnight? I was at a bar. Which one? Sharky's. So was your ex-husband. Don't get any ideas about leaving town. I'll be in touch. I should have told her that Jesus was the only way to escape from hell. It seems not very many people believe in hell anymore. I should have told her, but I didn't get the chance. Brett had a lot of friends, mostly ladies, and he hung out often with Mary Lee Draper. She owned a men's clothing store. She also had a relationship with Brett on the side. Mary Lee Draper? Who's asking? Detective Larson. Yes, Detective, I'm Marilee. Nice coat. Thank you. Where'd you get it? 
Keller's downtown. Too bad. You paid too much for it. So, what can I do for you? You need a new suit? No. But Brett Sampson does. Brett Sampson can get a suit somewhere else. Having a little trouble with him? What's it to you? Brett Sampson needs a suit for his coffin. Brett's dead? Oh, don't act so surprised. You knew all about it when I walked through the door. I didn't know anything. Where were you last night a little past midnight? At home, in bed, like the good little girl I am. Alone? None of your business. People think that God doesn't notice permissive lifestyles. They think they get away with it and that further clouds the issue. But I've noticed that God's word hasn't changed in all the years I've been a Christian. The only thing that has changed are the morals in society. They're going down. This was my chance to try and bring them back up a little. You know, the Lord is not pleased with the company you keep at night, if you catch my drift. Look here, detective. I've got a business to run. You know, they say that there was a girl sitting with Brett at the bar last night. And the description that the witnesses gave seemed to look a lot like you. I didn't kill anybody. But you were at Sharky's last night, weren't you? Brett's got a lot of nice suits. I hope you choose a good one for him. Yeah. We also have a lot of nice striped suits down at our jail. So don't even think about leaving town. I'll be in touch. I should have confronted her about what the Bible says about improper relationships. I should have told her about Jesus Christ and how he can set her free from her permissive lifestyle. Yeah, I should have told her, but I didn't get the chance. Next, I went to see Willie Johnson. He was a former business partner with Brett until one day Brett did him wrong. Stole about 20,000 from Willie and sent him to the unemployment line. Forced Willie to get a job at a warehouse. Willie was always looking for a payback, and maybe last night, he got it. Willie Johnson? What do you want? Detective Larson. Yeah, big deal. I've got a couple of questions to ask you. I'm busy. Yeah, so am I. I've got a murder case to solve. Ain't nobody killed nobody around here. Look, we can do this the easy way, or we can go downtown. I'll still get paid the same. What do you want? Do you know where Brett Sampson is? Yeah, I know where he should be. Where is that? Six feet under, why? Because he is. At least that's where he'll be when they bury him. What happened? You tell me. I ain't got no clue. He was shot and killed last night outside of Sharky's. But you already knew that, didn't you? I didn't go nowhere near that place last night. So go on, get out of here. He was lying and I knew it. And he quickly reminded me of another liar. The one Jesus said was a liar from the beginning. Yeah, that's right. I'm talking about the devil. People take the devil too lightly these days, but they shouldn't. He's as evil now as he ever was. Yes, you were. You were sitting at the bar trying to pick up a lady. You both had drinks and you got drunk, didn't you? We didn't get drunk. Oh, you just admitted you were at Sharky's last night, Willie. You remind me of someone else who lies all the time. Well, I saw I was there, but I ain't killed nobody last night. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I'm sure. Now go on, get out of here before I call the cops on you. But well, don't get any ideas about leaving town, Willie. Be in touch. I should have told him about Jesus, but I let the opportunity slip through my hands. The devil is a liar. He's got guys like Willie and millions of others deceived. Yeah, I should have told him about Jesus, but I didn't get the chance. My final suspect was Billy Sanders, a real ladies' man. Billy didn't like Brett, and Brett didn't like Billy. There was a good reason, though. They both always had their eyes on the same woman. Maybe that was the case last night. That's what I intended to find out. Billy Sanders? Yeah, that's me. Detective Larson. What's on your mind, Detective? I heard things didn't go so well for you last night. What are you talking about? You spent a nice, quiet evening at Sharky's bar. Yeah, so? Ain't no laws against that. No, not until the bullets started flying. 
I didn't hear nothing. No? Well, the competition for the ladies just got easier. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Brett Sampson stood in the way of one of those bullets. Is that right? Yeah. Well, maybe next time he'll move out of the way. What immediately came to mind was that verse in Proverbs, which says jealousy is the rage of a man, and Billy was the jealous type. If he had his eyes on a lady and another man got in the way, he did something about it. There was only one person who could set Billy free from this struggle within. You know, jealousy is a tough thing to deal with. There's really only one way to overcome it. What are you talking about? I had a nice, quiet evening at Sharky's. You said so yourself. Yeah, it was quiet, all right. But don't you get any ideas of eloping with anyone soon. You'll hear from me again. Jesus Christ is the only one who can help a person overcome rage and anger. He has the power to break it, and Billy needed to know that. I wanted to tell him, but I didn't get the chance. Back to the office, and the four main suspects in this case are all prime. They all had motives, and they all were at Sharky's last night at the time of the shooting. But which one of them did it? I had to find out. Give me a 327, please. Charlie? Larson? Well, I asked them all, and of course, none of them said they did it. If I were to take a guess, I would say that they all got together, put their finger on the trigger, and pulled it. And then they all sat down and had a drink. Well, let me put it this way. When I told them Brett was dead, none of them even blinked an eye. Yeah, that's because I was telling them something they already knew. Well, who do I think did it? I've got a hunch. Something one of them said tipped me off. Yeah. I'm gonna have them all meet me down at Sharky's just before midnight. So you get the boys down there and you close the joint. So it's just me and the four. Yeah, cause somebody killed Brett Sampson. And tonight we're gonna find out who. But before that meeting, we got work to do. I went and talked with some more people at Sharky's so I could have all of my ducks in a row. I also contacted the suspects again and had them meet me at the bar. One by one, they all reluctantly showed up. Sarah Ellen Sampson, Brett's ex-wife. Mary Lee Draper, Brett's ex-girlfriend. Willie Johnson, Brett's ex-business partner. And Billy Sanders, now Brett's ex-competition. This guy had so many exes, he was unbeatable at tic-tac-toe. But he wasn't ever going to play that game again. I brought you all here tonight because Brett Sampson is dead. And somebody in this room killed him. And you know who you are, so don't sit there and look around and act as if you don't. Now all four of you had motive to kill Brett. And to be honest with you, I don't blame you. He was a double-crossing, two-timing, dirty rat, and those were his good traits. But the Bible says, thou shalt not kill. And it's talking about murder. So... We can do this the easy way, and the guilty party can step forward. Or we can do this the hard way. So what's it going to be? Well, let me refresh your memory. I talked to some others who were here last night, and I found out exactly where everyone was. Sarah Ellen was sitting right there at that table, exactly where she is now. And Willie was at the bar flirting with a woman who was way out of his league. And Mary Lee was also at the bar. And Billy was sitting down at this end, at this table. And Brett was sitting here at the bar, which puts Mary Lee right beside him. So correct me if I'm wrong about anybody. I didn't kill him. A few nights ago, you and Brett had an argument. So when you saw Brett come in last night and have a seat at the bar, you had a plan. Be real nice to him, butter him up, so you could eventually make him toast. You're just making that up. No. I got two eyewitnesses who overheard your conversation while you two were sitting here. I still didn't kill him. Billy didn't like you sitting too close to Brett because you were looking a little too good for him last night. Yeah. 
He wanted to be with you, even though he already had someone else on his own arm. But that never stopped Billy before. What Billy wants, Billy gets. I didn't pull the trigger. Get over it, detective. You're the one that needs to get over it. I didn't kill anybody. And Sarah Ellen didn't like what she saw either. Her ex-husband was sitting there with another woman and it hit home deep inside. Even though she hated the man, there's a fine line between love and hate. And the pendulum swung back the other way for a brief moment. I didn't kill my husband. And even though he divorced you, you never got over him. You tried to get him out of your heart with other men, but it never worked. But what made things worse is he didn't want you anymore. And that made you feel furious inside. I said I didn't kill him. And watching from the sidelines was Willie Johnson. The perfect setup was unfolding right before his very eyes, wasn't it? Yeah. All the main people in Brett's life were all in the same room at the same time. And you were going to capitalize on it. The one thing that made him pull that trigger is when Brett stood up from the bar and he pulled out a wad of hundreds that would make anyone's eyes bulge out. It was part of that 20 thou. Remember, Willie? It used to be yours. You see, ladies and gentlemen, in my business, you learn to follow the money trail. And Willie did. So when Brett stood up to go out and take a breather, Willie was going to make sure that he breathed his last. I didn't kill Brett last night. And I'm telling the truth. Yeah, for once you are. You didn't kill him last night. You killed him this morning. You see, he was killed a little past midnight, which will make it early this morning. So while you were out on the town today, I got a search warrant for your office and place, and we found enough evidence to prove you did it. You see, you have two problems, Willie. One is you're a cheapskate. Instead of getting rid of the murder weapon, you kept it to make a deal at a pawn shop. And we found the gun at your place, and the bullets matched the slug that Brett took. And secondly, we found the money. Yeah. And they were all new bills. And they all matched the hundred that Brett spent at the bar last night. But you see, it's an open and shut case, Willie. And you're going up the river. All right. I killed him. I did it. None of these losers had the guts to shoot him, so I did. And I did him a favor. You don't see any of them crying over his death, do you? No. No, I don't. But do you see that door, Willie? Why don't you go through that door and some officers will take you to your new hotel room downtown. Does that mean we can leave now, detective? Yeah. You're all free to go. Even though none of you are really free. What's that supposed to mean? She took the bait. And now here was another chance to tell them all about Jesus Christ. And how he could set them free from the bondage and deception of sin. It was another chance. It might be my last. I'd better make it good. I'm talking about being free from the death penalty. The one that really counts. The spiritual one. You speak a language we can't understand, Detective. Yeah, and since we can't understand it, we ain't got time to listen. Either of you ladies care for a ride home? Walked out, my heart sank to an all-time low. I wanted to tell them about Jesus Christ. With the case now closed, I wondered if I would ever see any of them again. I wondered what would happen to each of them in the future. I knew that one day they would all meet their maker. I just hoped they'd be ready. I got a good hunch Brett Sampson wasn't. Yeah, I wanted to tell them all about Jesus, but didn't get the chance. And what about you? Do you know that Jesus Christ died for your sins? You don't want to go to the grave without Jesus Christ like Brett, do you? 
You don't want to spend the rest of your days in the slammer without Jesus Christ like Willie, do you? And as for the rest of them, well, you just saw how interested they were in what I had to say. And what about you? Why don't you give it some thought? Maybe even say a prayer. I feel pretty good. You know, it always feels good inside when you tell somebody about Jesus. I'm just glad I finally got the chance.